All right, John, networking and performance. Those are two things that are uh, a little bit of a mystery for a lot of uh, folks. How would you recommend you troubleshoot networking and performance as they relate to each other? So there's a couple of ways to look at this. One, there's kind of like a quick environmental health check to do and think through of here's some kind of common top issues. And then we'll talk secondly of a little bit about some of the tools that are there for that low level kind of visibility. Um, so first off, uh, life cycle, life cycle, life cycle, make sure your driver and firmware are updated. There is nothing worse than finding, you know, you've got some post-Soviet firmware on your, your NIC. Um, and then, you know, you've got a driver that's from 20 years later and those interactions can get really weird. So please deploy VLCM, update your driver. Uh, next up, choose the right NICs. Um, you know, one gig, I think in theory, it's technically still supported for hybrid vSAN, but it, no, stop it. Stop using that. We got to, we got to go, we got to go to 10 at a minimum. And realistically, 25 is kind of the new 10. Go buy 25 gig NICs. Um, switches. Uh, this is an area where, yes, there's some switches out there that, yes, those are technically 10 gig ports, but if there's some uplink on some ancient Catalyst 2960S, that's, you know, from the dates from the early days of my career, that's probably not going to have good buffers or perform well. So, you know, NIC switches connectivity. Let's, let's take this a step up and look at your, your configurations. Make sure that you understand that IO path end to end and you're not hairpinning through some random router on the other side of the data center. Um, you're not running through a firewall. You're not running through an IDS. Someone hasn't managed to somehow hairpin vSAN traffic through an NSX overlay. These are, you know, all things, you know, that can cause performance. Now, how do I know that there actually is a performance issue that networking is responsible, uh, which is probably a kind of a better question. We have some new end-to-end -end IO troubleshooting that will help highlight that, that has come out within 7 Update 3. There's also been steady improvements to the vSAN performance service that have been iterating for the past several releases. We will actually look at networking stats. Previously, we'd say, hey, you got some latency, but now we'll also look and say, you've got packet loss, you've got TCP retransmit, you've got checksum failures. And those are typically going to correspond to, you know, checks. If I've got CRC, I'm getting frame level errors. That probably means I've got like a bad cable, frankly. Uh, if, I'm, if the frames aren't coming through, they're coming through mangled. Um, if I'm seeing high retransmits, if I'm seeing these things, this gives me a basis for, for definitively saying this is the networking, you know, that is responsible for the latency versus if I go look at the disk group that's backing it and the cache disk, if the cache disk is got 200 milliseconds of latency. Well, it's not the network. It's just, you know, it's the device on the other side of the network. So that's kind of the thing to, to think about from that. There's some additional new health checks that will also look for other networking problems, um, issues with LACP negotiation, issues with duplicate IP address. Um, this, you know, it's the year 2020, it's going to be the year 2096 and people are still going to be putting the same IP address on two hosts and causing an IP conflict and crashing things. Uh, so we, we have automatic detection for that now to help with that. Um, lastly, the vSAN performance service, there actually is a network diagnostic mode. What this does is this, instead of going on a much more spaced out general pull interval, this actually for 24 hours will pull the networking stack every one second. Um, and it actually is, if your phone home is working, your CIP is, that will actually do roll-ups and ship that out to support every 10, every 10 minutes. And that can help while you're working with support, having them be able to pull up and visualize exactly what's going on can help kind of get a better grasp of what's going on with the network. Yeah, that, uh, so it sounds like though, that even though, you know, vCenter and vSAN isn't necessarily responsible or doesn't have the management domain of things like network switches, hey, that doesn't mean that you, you, you can't use uh, things like you know, some of the tools that you mentioned to give you some indication that there may be a problem. Now, you know, it sounds like that you still need to focus on uh, um, things like the network switches uh, to make sure that the, they're configured right along with the actual network uh, cards as well. Um, so no, that's all really good information. I know philosophically as VMware admins, we may think it's always DNS. And then if it's not DNS, go to blame the network, but it's nice to be able to show up with proof, so to speak. And you can hit that export on the performance service graph and say, look, my pretty little frames that are leaving are getting mangled and showing up with bad CRCs. Let's, let's actually discuss this. Cause sometimes frankly, it's, it's 
escalating performance issues that cross different domains of the data center can frankly be kind of a political issue. Mm -hmm. um, and it's good to be able to have, you know, a, a good, uh, you know, documentation of what's going on to help uh, begin that discussion.